I first started using Notion in 2019 for work, and I quickly started using it in my personal life as well. I loved, and still love really, the interface, the customizability, the API, and just how friendly the Notion team has always been to this day. I think that Notion revolutionized note-taking in so many ways. So why am I using Obsidian today and not Notion? Well, for me, it comes down to which tool really matches the way that I think. In this video, rather than giving you a full, detailed feature comparison, I'm going to tell you about the fundamental difference between Notion and Obsidian, and why Obsidian Data View, a community plugin, helped me choose Obsidian for good. Before you even create a new note in Notion, there's one question that you have to address first. Where do you put the note? Notion is hierarchical. Everything is in folders. Notion asks you to decide where to put a note before you've even written it. And where you put it could really influence the way that you're going to think about that note. In fact, many people who use Notion as a second brain of sorts end up creating notes for every aspect of their lives, like work and personal and family and spirituality and every area of their lives that they consider important. Notion encourages you to start from the top and then work your way down. If I wanna create a page called YouTube, well, I can just create it here, right? And I can just have it appear in the sidebar, but then this quickly gets out of hand as you have more and more of these pages that are cluttering your sidebar. Well, maybe if I'm going to be watching a YouTube video, then it should probably be under content consumed. But then what if you decide that you want to start your own YouTube channel and you want to have this YouTube category encompass both the YouTube videos that you watch as well as the YouTube videos that you create. Well, then you might think, okay, well, I'll put it in personal maybe. But then what if you watch a few YouTube videos that actually have something to do with work? Well, maybe you can move it to the work folder, but we've already gone through three different folders and really they could have fit in any one of them but you can't have one page in three different folders. So you have to know where you're going before you actually get there. Obsidian encourages a more bottom up approach rather than a top to bottom approach. In Obsidian, you just create a note now and think about where it fits in later. It doesn't even really matter which folder you put it in. Obsidian lets you use tags and links to connect it to every topic you think would be appropriate. One note, multiple ways to find it. So here in Obsidian, I do have my file explorer here, but I typically don't even leave this open. I'm just leaving it open right now so you can see how it looks like. And let me create a new note. I'm just hitting command N because I'm on a Mac. So I'm gonna create a note on this video, which is kind of like Notion versus Obsidian. And I can put the title here. Now, where do I put it? Well, it doesn't really matter. I don't have a YouTube folder. I could do it in folders. Or I could just say, this is a YouTube video. And now I can go to that YouTube page. So if I click on that, now I have a page on YouTube. If I think this also relates to personal knowledge management, I can put that in as well. So now I've got two links and I didn't have to put this note in either of them. If I'd rather use tags, I can do that as well. Like maybe I will put my video here so that I'll be able to see a list of all the notes that have the my video tag by clicking on it. And if I didn't want to see this tag in the body of the note, I could create it as front matter. So instead I could have tags, my video, YouTube, Notion, Obsidian, if I want to. So I'll delete this and then to see if it's working, I'll look at the tag pane on the side here and it already has a bunch of tags and look, there's one on Obsidian and YouTube and let's look for my video, there it is. And by clicking on that, I'll be able to see all the notes that have this tag. So over time, you end up with something that looks like this. This is Obsidian's graph view and I use it way more than the file explorer because it's more relevant to my use of Obsidian. Here's what it looks like on my personal vault where I have a lot more nodes. When you see the nodes and the connections between them visualized like this, then it really starts to look like a real brain. 
So on one hand, we have Notion with a very organized, structured hierarchy of data that, while you're creating it, encourages you to decide on what's important. And on the other, there's Obsidian, which is more like a freeform, sprawling network of interconnected ideas. And the real question is, which one does your brain look like? Notion's limiting structure is also apparent in what is simultaneously its best feature, databases. In Notion, you would create a database and then you create items to go into it. So imagine that you have a jumble of notes that you want to create. Some of them are about people, there's one note about a country that you'd like to visit, one about a book, and one that is simultaneously a book and a TV show. In Notion, it makes sense to create separate databases, one for people, one for books, one for TV shows, and then you'd start populating each database. But what if you decide later on that the categories that you chose when you created the databases aren't the way that you will really want to access that data? What if you just want a list of everything that you did in 2021, whether that was watching a movie or reading a book or going to Japan? Then Notion would struggle with that. So I've created a new database called Things That I Did in 2021. And what if I want to add like this country that I have? So I have this Japan one. You can't sort of move that one into that table without removing it from the previous one. Just to visualize it a little bit, here are the three databases, people, books, and TV shows, and here are the separate nodes within them. Now for the 2021 problem, if you had thought about it, what you could have actually done is created a single database and called it 2021. And within that database, you could have had all of these notes with an extra property that says type equals TV show and books. But that's if you had thought that you were going to need it in a single database. So you get into this weird situation where you had to have known what you were going to need, but you had to have known it when you created it, not later on when you found different uses for that page or note. On the other hand, the Obsidian counterpart to Notion's databases is a community plugin, and it's called Obsidian Data View. Obsidian Data View is very different from Notion's databases because in Notion, you can create databases. And with Obsidian Data View, you don't create a database. It just takes all of your notes, everything that's in your vault, and turns that into a database. You can just build that out on the fly. You don't have to decide now what properties you're going to want to assign to different notes. You can just decide that when those properties become necessary. So in Obsidian, rather than starting with a database or worrying about the categorization, you just create the pages for these people, books, and the country. Then you add metadata as you see fit. For example, you could put type person, and for this one, we could do type is country. And later on, if you decide that data is important, then you can add a date field as well. And then you just tell Obsidian how you want to view all of that data. So here's my page for things I did in 2021. And I'm just going to open up my Japan page on the side so I can see the metadata for it. I'm going to create a data view query that will return this Japan page. I'm going to type data view, and then I want a table. And let's say in addition to the name and the link to the page, I also want the type. Type as type, and that's going to bring in the type field here, which in this case should be country. But that would return so many notes. So if I exit out of this, you'll see that there's every note that I have basically in this fold, but that's not what I want. So I'll also add where contains date is 2021. What I'm saying here is that I want this field to contain 2021 in case I have something that spanned over multiple years. If I click out of this query, you'll see that it's now returning Japan. So let's say I also met Kieran in 2021. Let's open up the Kieran page and I'm going to add date 2021. And look, the Kieran file has appeared in this data view as well. Now let's see how to do this for people. I'm going to just copy this and then go to my people page, paste that in, but instead I'm going to say type person. And now Kieran's showing up there as well. And if I wanna do the same thing to Alice, then I just have to add the metadata here. So that type is person too. And Alice is in there as well. 
So unlike in Notion, there's still just the one database, but you can have these data views, one that's called people and one that's called 2021, and see a different subset of the data in the database. And those can change all the time. They are queries rather than entire databases based on something that you had to decide in advance. So where does that leave us? Notion is best for you if you know exactly what you want and how to write it. And if you have a very specific and limited use case, such as internal documentation for work or a personal wiki around a very small and narrow area of expertise, or if you just want a list of tasks and content consumed, Notion will give you the structure that you want and allow you to map out everything and make sure that no stone is left unturned. But if you're looking for a tool that is open-ended enough to allow for the chaotic complexity of real human thought that'll help you make serendipitous connections between disparate topics, a tool that will grow with you in ways that you could never have planned, then maybe you will agree with me that the best tool for you is Obsidian. DataView is a community plugin for Obsidian, and if you want to know more about the plugin ecosystem, then check out this video on the top 10 Obsidian plugins. If you're more interested in DataView in particular, well then stay tuned because I'm going to make a video soon that will go over the installation, setup, and use cases for DataView. Until then, thank you for watching.